kind of like David's walk-up music there. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I'm Rich Tews. I lead our information governance program at Trace3, and it's uh, my pleasure today to introduce David Coe from Banner Health in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, David leads the data management, analytics, population health. I think there's a pretty long list of, of responsibilities there in this organization. And uh, uh, I think we've heard the word data about how many times in the last 24 hours? A billion? I think it's because it's important. It's very important. And uh, you know, Mark Gornberg mentioned uh, the importance of, of data and AI in healthcare just briefly before. And uh, that, again, just is going to tie into the, the message that David's bringing here today. How important it is to trust your data in healthcare. Uh, last night we were at, a, at a, an event. And I heard, overheard David when he was having a conversation with somebody, and uh, he said, you know, we have to get it right. We're in healthcare. If we don't get it right, people die. You know? So it's really, really important stuff to, to think about. This is data, and, and it actually, in this healthcare industry, uh, is about life and death. So it's uh, an amazing responsibility. That, that we have and uh, an amazing um, ability that we have then to deliver the information that people need. Uh, you didn't come here to, to listen to me talk and, and again, uh, but, I, but I'm really passionate about this, this topic in particular and uh, the only one that's going to top me on that I think is David here. So Thanks. no further ado. Thank you, David. Thanks. Hi, everybody. Oh, yeah. Clap after I'm done talking if you want, not before. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I was going to walk through the audience and let you all take selfies with me, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Magic Johnson took, took my gig, and I don't want to look derivative, so we'll just continue. Um, the Trace 3 folks called me, and they said, you want to give a presentation, and uh, what should we call it? And I came up with this. For some reason, they didn't want to put that on the... Uh, municipal infrastructure is a somewhat tenuous metaphor demonstrating the principles of strategic data performance partnerships, or how I learned to stop worrying and love data governance. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you kind of the experience we've had and what we're doing and how we're approaching data governance and at Banner Healthcare. So first a little bit about Banner Healthcare. Banner's pretty big. Um, that's 23 hospitals, 5,600 licensed beds, over 300 clinical endpoints, PCPs, family practice, um, 60,000 employees, largest employer in the state of Arizona. Historically, Banner's made all of its money through fee-for-service. In our industry, that just simply means sort of a hotel model of healthcare. Uh, heads and beds, right? Somebody is sick, they lay down, they get better, we get paid. Banner's not a hospital system anymore. Banner's a population health company. I'll tell you what that means during the story of data governance today. One of the ways we become a population health company is we partnered with a lot of other organizations uh, to help take on ensuring we're taking on the risk for more than half a million lives. Last year alone, of Banner's $9 billion in revenue, more than 20% of that came from our insurance lines of business where we actually have the responsibility of paying for health care for people, not just collecting dollars or premiums. Again, I'll share a little bit more about that along the way. All right, can you guys hear me okay? So far, so good? Yeah? All right, I, I hear a little ringing, that's why I'm wondering. All right, so what we are doing is we are on a journey. And this is my tenuous metaphor for uh, municipal infrastructure, a bridge. So on one side of the bridge, we have what we do today as IT. We deliver trusted data. But on the other side, what we know is happening in healthcare is we're shifting to consumerism. Most of your industries probably are too, where the customer comes first, they're informed, they have a greater amount of literacy to be a consumer in your business, and so we have to help the business then, as IT professionals, to partner with us to help drive insights into the business, and this can only be done through data governance. Not far from here is the Pat Tillman Memorial Bridge. It spans um, the Colorado River between Nevada and Arizona, right over by Hoover Dam. It's about 10 years old, 1,900 feet long, and when they connected that arch that you see there, 
It was three-eighths of an inch apart, off-center. That's a lot of planning, a lot of design, and a lot of work that goes into that. Purposeful, mindful engineering, and I would add, data. So in my metaphor, we connect IT to the business through analytics and the use of data to drive insights into the business. And if the bridge is governance, then putting a bullet train on the tracks is advanced analytics. It's our ability to actually use our data in a way that's valuable, to prove that our investment to gather all this information was worth it, and to be able to bring it back to the business in ways that help them make better decisions. So first, you gotta start with the foundation of strategy. Most folks don't build those bridges accidentally. They don't put a bunch of steel in a box and shake it up and end up with a bridge, right? It's gotta be governed. Your data needs to be accurate. It needs to be on time and comprehensive. People need to be able to find it easily and quickly. They've got to value it. And when I say they, I'm talking about the users. I'm talking about the people who receive your analytics, your reports, are the beneficiaries of your data governance program. It needs to be valued, traceable, and secure. Secure is a big topic here at this conference, I know. Your governance, pro uh, your governance model has to include data security as part of it. Otherwise, you end up with something like this. Build me a bridge, wasn't strong enough. Put a train on it, too heavy, too slow. Train falls in. That's a slide from a Buster Keaton movie, as it turns out. Up in Oregon, they filmed this. You can actually go dig around in the mud and find pieces of that bridge and pieces of the train still in the water. It's a little bit like the data model and reporting today sometimes. <laughs> All right, I told you I'm gonna make this a tenuous metaphor. <laughs> can you stick with the bridge here for a while? All right, so here we go. Here's this bridge. The foundation of this bridge, the thing that connects the left side to the right side is information and data governance. So on the left side, we're gonna always think about is IT. Bear with me. Every time you think of the left, think of IT. Every time you see on the right, think of business. So to build out a data governance program, you start at the far ends. And you talk about stewardship. So the IT organizations can say, who gave us that data? Why did they give us that data? What are the rules of them giving us that data? And the business in the meantime is saying, what's in that data? What matters? What are the metrics? How do we think about that data? Next, you keep moving towards the middle, bridging IT to business by saying, on the IT side, hey, where is it? How do we hold it in custody, right? Who's the custodian of this data, technically, and from a business point of view? And the business at the same time in the program is saying, what are the rules of use? What are the regulatory requirements? Because if we're gonna store it on one side, we better know how and why we're doing it and safely. Our industry is, you can guess, is pretty heavily regulated when it comes to the use of data. Uh, you guys maybe have heard of HIPAA? Right, okay, moving on. So now you take those business rules that are emerging and you build them into the tools that translate and transact data so it's done the right way. So the rules apply logic. This is where you can start to see AI architecture coming in and playing a role. Now the business starts to see the value of the data. And they start to assign that value to things like, oh, well, if you're a senior director in a specific role, these are the data elements you are to use. Here are your tools. These are the things you should be making your decisions from. Suddenly the data has a lot of value. Be careful in this space because now you're creating appetite and a lot of it. People will start making data decisions and they'll say, where's my data for my next decision? That's a good place to be. And then last, really, you set all the definitions. Where is it documented? How do you hold it together? Put it all together on the IT side. And on the business side, you build an asset inventory, a catalog of all the rules, all the decisions, all the tools, all the dashboards, why we have them, and you put them in one place and you publish it. And this, in a sense, is a really straightforward way to approach information and data governance, bringing trusted data to business insights. IT, bridging, right, all the way over to the business and what they need. You'll notice that the bridge, though, itself is neither IT nor business. It's data governance, its own thing, kind of like analytics and reporting. This is where Trace3 jumped in with us and helped us in our first phase of putting all this together 
really excellent team that came together with uh, Rich and Glenn and all the other good folks that helped us out. It was pretty great. Nice to see a lot of them in the room here today. They gave us a help designing a program and a roadmap. I'm not done. I'm gonna tell you what the benefits of this are and I'm gonna tell you where you see successes in other areas in industry, other industries. So now that you've built your foundational layer of information and data governance, now you can really build a bridge between the IT architecture and the needs of the business, IT and business, and we've really seen that come together here. No good IT presentation is, uh, they are very, <laughs> it's very distracting. <laughs> it's, like, it's like an eyeball. <laughs> No, don't run. No, don't. yeah, you're right. That's yeah, that's right. I should be using. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Lots of IT presenters talk about Amazon and hold them up as a really great use case or an example of data. In this case, that's true. That they have not made their business decisions and needs based in a vacuum. Right? They're always testing. They're always building new products based on what they're testing. Amazon knows more about me and you than your doctor knows more than your doctor knows about you and me. And that's a pretty interesting thing to think about because they sell identity out on the internet. They have human interaction devices that they made you buy to put in your house, which is a pretty interesting thing, right? And suddenly they're building things on the back end about human interaction that you and I are probably not even conceiving of yet, though I hope there are people in the room who are. Then they sell web services. They run a great percentage of the internet, and when it goes down, the internet tends to go down. This graph in the middle here just shows that of the most popular websites, they have about 5% of the top 100 websites. Anecdotally, that means they house about 7% of the internet, which actually is about 50% of the traffic that goes through, 11% of their revenue, which seems to be, reading around the internet for this information, about $8.3 billion last year. That's when the business knows what it needs from IT, in a governed way, that's the kind of stuff you can build, and it doesn't happen in a vacuum, it doesn't happen by accident. What does that mean for Banner? For Banner, that simply means our business model is changing. We are a population health company now. That means you, the consumer, before you're a patient, when you're a patient, and after you're a patient, matter to us in a way that is different than before. Now it means because we are taking on the risk where we are holding and looking at you and saying, how do we keep you healthy instead of only seeing you when you're sick. How do we get paid for keeping you healthy? This is what we call the triple aim in healthcare. It just simply means it's uh, almost other, every other industry in America. Um, better outcomes, better product, right? At a lower cost with a better experience. In healthcare, that's innovative and novel. And that's a great thing because that means our data model needs to change. And that means our data governance needs to become important in a way it's never been important before. We now bring together claims information, and clinical information, and user information, and demographic information. We fold it together and we build with AI models that identify risk before it happens, clinical events before they show up. So we can go find people and use the dollars we used to get for only getting paid when people were sick, and use those dollars to find people and keep them healthy. This is a big change in healthcare. Now, of course, that requires a lot of reporting and analytics. A little story about reporting and analytics. This is Tesla, you may have heard of them too. Um, Tesla is an interesting company because one day all the people who bought those early Tesla vehicles woke up and their car could drive itself. Over the air update, huge upgrade to your vehicle, but why? When I heard this story, I thought that was fascinating. And the reason that they were first to market and the reason that they are able to provide a solution in real time using all of their hardware and their data is because for a number of years, those cars were out driving without that function. All the sensors were collecting data. Millions and millions of miles of information quietly um, collected, gathered together, and then given back to the user as value. That's governance of data, again. I would offer that Tesla is not a car company, it's a data company that sells cars. You're in that data set. If you have ever driven past a Tesla vehicle, you are a data point. That's pretty interesting. I sometimes just want to ask Elon if he would like to say thank you to all of us for becoming his data set. So reporting and analytics in healthcare is interesting. This graph just simply shows that when I talk about how the payment model is shifting to risk, this just shows that 
the federal government is essentially driving all of these insurance carriers, including Banner, to take on risk to get paid for outcomes, to get paid for keeping you healthy and when you get sick, delivering you a quality of care that's untouchably great and provably so. Well, how do we prove it? Data. So we move from fee for service, looking backwards, being centered on care, to value-based care, population health, where we're looking forwards, trying to find opportunities to engage people and keep them healthy, and we become human-centric in our data model. The human-centric data model is a big new thing for healthcare. It's a place where we're all just learning and figuring it out, but a lot of other industries have figured it out already. So just like Amazon and just like Tesla, we have to get good at doing this pyramid. The top 5% of this pyramid, imagine, this is the whole population. The bottom is a big group of healthy, working well people. The very top 5% are the sickest people. Guess who spends the money? The top of the pyramid. Depending on the population, the top 5% of that pyramid of wellness to sickness, the top 5% spend 70 to 80% of every dollar. So if you spend your money there to keep those people in a good outcome and spend the rest of the money keeping people from rising up, the cost of healthcare will go down in America. It's pretty straightforward. But what you have to do is you have to find them before they get to the top of the pyramid, <laughs> which means real-time data, where it is needed and when it is needed. And this is why data governance becomes critical, because if data is just everywhere and out of control and siloed, we're never going to get there. So the other thing you need to recognize is you need to know who that person is. So part of data governance, a result of good data governance and not just an IT solution, is master in data management, having a golden record of a single individual person. Here's a story about Target. Target also knows more about me than my providers do. They, they know who I am. They know if I come through the web page who I am, if I come through the pharmacy who I am, if I come through the retail establishment, they know who I am. Great master data management. But here's a flaw in their governance model. There was an 18-year-old girl living in her parents' house and she was pregnant. Target found out she was pregnant and sent her family mailers to the house she lived at with her parents. And her parents found out she was pregnant because Target told them. And that's master data management with a miss on governance. And I'll bet they never thought about that, but that just shows how deeply important it is to be really, really meticulous in both your master data management and your data governance model. So now we come up a, sort of above, if you will, IT and business, and we start to look at the ability to do real data science, to apply real learning to the data now that it's managed and connected between the architecture and the business so we can put that back into the business to create this virtuous cycle of information flowing back and forth between data science and the business question itself. This is my drawing that says, you want to go from today to tomorrow, knowing what happened, sort of looking backwards. Why did it happen? Doing the anal analytics. And moving forward into insights and saying, what happens next by predicting through AI and machine learning but then getting into foresight, what we think of as prescriptive, saying, well, let's make something else happen instead. So imagine yourself laying in a bed in a hospital, and the analogy here is your doctor knows what happened. That's why you're laying there, right? And they know why it happened. We're getting better and better now at saying, here's what's going to happen next. And we're beginning to get into this place of prescriptive opportunity and helping our providers say, Let's make something else happen. So it's kind of a neat place to be because if you do it right, the apex, the middle, the center of all this is what I jokingly call the mother of all dashboards. That's me. I'm the mother of all dashboards. That's you. All of the information about you will bring a benefit in the future because right now, on the left side of this, we don't have the personalized medicine, the genomic medicine that we're gonna have in the future. Right now, if you go in and there's a prescription you need or a treatment or a therapy you need, that therapy is, let's just say it's a medication. We look at that and we say there's one medication and we give it across a million people. It's gonna work really well for some 
it's kind of going to work for others, and for others, it might even hurt them. Personalized medicine and the promise of data in healthcare is to be able to know the bacteria in my guts, the genetics in my blood, the knowledge in my brain, my willingness to participate, and put that all together to be able to create a therapy just for me, just for me alone, customized and specific to me. That's the future. That's all because data governance is happening. So just to review, the business, IT, looking back, knowing the person, being able to apply AI and machine learning, knowing that the business is using and valuing the data so you can provide a personalized consumer experience. I think this works for pretty much every industry, a little model like this. So my tenuous bridge, I've got a couple more bridge things too, almost there, is very simply, you can put now on top of that bridge the bullet chain of advanced analytics, because this is what we want to do. We want to have the insight-driven healthcare conversation. I want you guys to imagine this is you. So up there's Jane, she's a case manager. She's engaged with you day to day, you know, because she wants you to stay healthy and maybe you have some risk and they want to help you with that. This is, by the way, this is Sophia. She's our persona, she's the consumer we serve at Banner. We talk about Sophia in every meeting. She's uh, got a profile and we always think about what she'd want. And we believe that she would want to have someone send her a text that says, hey, I've got a health optimization recommendation for you. It's informed by clinical trials and data about people just like you. It's personalized just for you. It's all based on your level of interest and ability to engage with your own care, your health, your wellness, and what you need. And we're going to do this together. And I'm going to tell you a specific confidence which treatments are going to work for you. Your health management plan is going to be best for you. Where to go get those services, and I'm even going to tell you what they cost. So you have to think about as master data, outcomes, cost data, predictive analytics, AI, machine learning, social determinants of data, social determinants of health data, and recommendation engines all firing together, bringing it together around the person, a person-centric data model. But Jane, maybe that's a robot, right? Because again, think about the AI firing in the background and just engaging people like this. Pretty remarkable future we're looking at. So your data governance program really matters. But when you talk about it, be careful, because people do instantly not, they don't go to the, the slide I just showed you, which is a pretty good slide to believe in. Their brains go to bureaucracy. So sell it from the use case. That slide that I just showed you, that's our use case for our data governance program. That's where we want to be in the future. So don't sell it as a bureaucracy and be flexible, because the last thing you want to have happen is you build your bridge, you get your program in place, and the river moves. You guys ever seen this slide? This is the Chulateca Bridge. It's in Honduras. The hurricane kept coming up the Ismuth and blowing out the bridge every time a hurricane would come in. And so they hired a Japanese company to come in and build this monolithic bridge. Next hurricane came in, bridge stood, river moved. <laughs> so be flexible. Thank you guys, that's it. Okay.